Air 40 for Readable Crest Titans. The Carlisle stages will be the fourth round of the Jordan Road Surfacing BTRDA Rally Series and would mark the crossover into the second half of the championship season. Matt Edwards leads the crews away with Luke Francis next on the road. Round one winner Paul Bird follows them into the stages. On to the stages then, and it would be the lead for Stephen Petch and Michael Wilkinson. They make a great start to the event to lead the way by 15 seconds going into service. For Matt Edwards and Darren Garrett, it would be second. They'd be a little way behind the lead, but keeping everyone else at bay for now. Power steering issues causing a struggle, meaning that a different approach to the gear change and handbrake would be adopted inside the car. Well, that's Chris Long, 80, keep right turn, square left. Right, you go down them slowly when I say fourth, third, second. Now pull handbrake. Okay, square left, well right into two left, okay, and five right long. 40 of a small brow, right tight as two in. With strong results on all rounds so far this season, it will be another good start for Paul Bird and Jack Morton here in Carlisle. Third place for now, just four seconds back from Edwards. We'd lose one of our leading crews in the early stages of the event though. Luke Francis and John Roberts suffering with the dust of the cars ahead. The pair going off the road into a ditch and ending their event. Charlie Payne enlists the help of Dale Bowen this weekend. The Fiesta WRC pairing ending the morning with fourth place overall, 13 seconds back from Bird. It would be a good start to the day for Pat Naylor and Ian Lawrence, meanwhile. On paper, anyway, they do lose their sump guard in the second stage of the day, having to fashion a new one on in service from a sheet of plywood, ready for the afternoon stages. For Sasha Kakad and James Aldridge, it will be sixth place. They'd be one minute back from the lead in the Fiesta, but their place wouldn't be as safe as they would have liked. And here's why. They'd have to watch out for Russ Thompson and Andy Murphy, who end the morning on exactly the same time as Kakad. They weren't happy with the handling over the morning stages. Some changes would have to be made in service, which wasn't good for that car up ahead of them. More pace would ensue. Ian Joel and Graham Wood would lead the way in the B13 class at this stage. After going off the road last time out, they would of course be making a cautious start, ending the morning with eighth place overall. Peter Stevenson and Patrick Walsh put in some good times to take ninth overall at this stage. Going well in a focused WRC, 24 seconds back from Joel. And rounding out the top 10 were Matthew Hurst and Declan Deer. Second place in the B13 class was theirs too at this stage in the event. And just outside our top 10, it will be third in that class for Richard Hill and Stefan Evans, lying just seven seconds back from Hurst in that 11th place overall. And just the one crew in the H4 class, it was a battle of endurance for the Mitsubishi Galant VR4 of Tom Coltry and Ian Fraser, lying in 27th place on the leaderboard. So midway through the rally and it's Petch leading the way. Could our reigning champions season be back on top once again? On to the second half of the rally then, and there'll be some changes here in Carlisle. We'd lose a few crews, including Richard Hill and Stefan Evans. They go off the road in stage seven. And that stage would also be the end of the road for Charlie Payne and Dale Bowen their event coming to an end shortly after service. And probably the biggest shake-up in the results would come with the loss of Stephen Petch and Michael Wilkinson. The morning's rally leaders and of course our defending champions also coming to a stop in stage seven of the rally. So that left some pretty seismic changes to the leaderboard ahead, of course. And it would be a move to third in the B13 class now as a result for Lee and Craig Burgess. For Tom Coltry and Ian Fraser, it will be 10th place in the Gold Star. The H4 class was, of course, theirs as well. 
And we see some new faces moving into the top of the leaderboard. Brian Bell and Paul Spooner ending the event with ninth place in the category here in Carlisle. There'd be no advance on the class position though for Matthew Hurst and Declan Deer. They remain second in the B13 class, moving up to eighth place now. And things never seem to go that smoothly up north for Russ Thompson and Andy Murphy. Frustratingly for them, they clip a tree stump hard in the afternoon stages, causing some pretty hefty damage, and meaning they have to limp the car home to take second in the NR4 class. A good result considering what could have been, but not that victory that they were hunting. Peter Stevenson and Patrick Walsh, meanwhile, finished the event with a great sixth place. A very strong end to the event for the Focus pair. Ian Joel and Graham Wood as well, keeping things on the gravel this time out to end the rally with the B13 class win, as well as a great fifth place overall to end the day. For Sasha Kakat and James Aldridge, it will be fourth. They move the right way on the leaderboard in the afternoon stages, taking that position with strength in the Fiesta. There'd be some troubles to contend with though for Pat Naylor and Ian Lawrence in the NR4 battle. Thankfully for them, Russ Thompson had already had his own problems. A puncture for Naylor towards the end of the last stage would cost them a little time, but they managed to keep hold of that class lead and indeed third place overall. Four right. I think we've got a puncture. I don't know, I'm not sure. Four right. 150. 150. 150. Keep it on, let's go. For Matt Edwards and Darren Garrett, it wasn't to be victory this time out. Second place would be theirs. Still some good points for the championship, putting them in third place so far this season. But that does mean it's victory for Paul Bird and Jack Morton. They take that win by 21 seconds, giving themselves an 18 point lead in the championship going into the next round. So confirmation then of the times at the end of the rally. That result for Bird securing him a lead overall in the championship standings. Edwards not too far behind in third. The Carlisle stages marks the return to split seeding, meaning the 1400 and Rally First BTRDA crews get to run first on the road once again. For this weekend though, it will be a new name at the top of our 1400 leaderboard through the opening stages. Tommy Meadows and Emma Morrison leading the way with 30 seconds of an advantage. Chasing them down were Steve Black and John Connor in the Suzuki Swift second in the category at this stage, the entry being made up of only 1,400 S crews this weekend, so the class places would reflect the overall ones. Stuart Spire and Pete Williams would be suffering with the dust like many others, catching the car in front on a number of occasions, but despite that, it would be a good start with third place, level on times with black. Kieran Darrington returns with a different co-driver for this round, Adrian Cooper alongside, things going well for them over the morning stages, finding more pace and reaching service with fourth place. Just back from Darrington on the results were Richard Cole and Abby Haycock. Fifth place for the escort pair, 33 seconds back from Darrington. And the times will be even closer behind this pair. Pete Gorst and Phil King just a single second back after the morning stages in sixth place. The fight would be on between Cole and Gorst as we go through the rally. Chris Bush and Robert Smith would be seven. They had 28 seconds to make up to Gorst ahead if they wanted to move up that leaderboard though. For Dave and Toby Brick, it would be an uncharacteristic start to the rally. Eighth place for the pair at this stage, almost two minutes back from the lead and well off the pace. And the same could be said for Chris Powell and Jim Lewis. They encountered problems in the morning to leave them running way down the leaderboard, back in the rest of the field in ninth. And in rally first, there would just be one crew, meaning Wesley Guilford and Sam Coleman would have just the stages to fight this weekend. So with the morning complete, it's a fresh looking leaderboard in the 1400s. Looking like we might just have a new name topping the results this weekend. On to the afternoon stages then, and we'd lose our only rally first crew, Wesley Guilford and Sam Coleman crashing out into a ditch in the afternoon stages. There would of course be no change to the results for Chris Powell and Jim Lewis. They do finish, but down in ninth place. And the afternoon had turned into a disaster, I think it was fair to say, for Stuart Spire and Pete Williams. They go off the stage, losing a lot of time. Hopes of a good result also now gone. But with the help of the spectators, good old fashioned club rallying style. They get going again, reaching the finish with eight. 
So with those two crews suffering way behind the other finishers, it would be up to Richard Cole and Abby Haycock to take seventh place at this stage. The times though still quite close. They'd only have a five second gap to Chris Bush and Robert Smith ahead. They of course take sixth place with that time, themselves not too far off the crew up ahead. And that crew would be this pair, Dave and Toby Brick, reaching the end of the rally with a disappointing fifth place. But given the problems for others around them, it didn't seem too bad. Frustratingly for them, a puncture would be no hope of a podium finish for Kieran Darrington and Adrian Cooper, despite the fact that the pace was very definitely there. They end the rally with fourth, just seven seconds outside of those podium positions. Pete Gorst and Phil King, meanwhile, have a great outing in the Nova. Only the third time out in the car this season and clearly settling into it well. They take the final step on our podium. No change to the results at the top though. Steve Black and John Connor unable to gain any time on our leaders, having to settle for second place this weekend. But that all of course means we have a new name at the top of the 1400s here in Carlisle. Tommy Meadows and Emma Morrison taking victory and with a comfortable 41 second advantage. So confirmation then of the final results at the end of the rally. The Silver Star category on the Carlisle Stages Rally would see a good entry take to the fast Kielder Stages. With all of the BTRDA Championship regulars out, it was going to be one heck of a battle. And over the first few stages, there would be a new leader at the top of the results. George Lepley and Tom Woodburn taking that lead by the end of the first three stages, an advantage of 16 seconds. Second in the category will be Steve Hopewell and Clive Jones. They lead the B11 class as well at this stage. And just behind them in the class and overall standing so far were Nick Dobson and Steve Pugh, the escort pair just nine seconds back from Hopewell. For Bob Vardy and Keaton Williams, it will be fourth. They were lying second in the R2 Cup as well at this stage behind our category leader, Lepley. Ernie Graham and Robin Kellard lead the way in our historic crews, leading the H3 class as well as lying in fifth place overall. The day wouldn't be going to plan for everyone though, as you might expect. We would unfortunately lose Owen McMackin and Lee Taylor early on. They bend the suspension on the escort. And it would also be the end of the road for Alan McDowell and Gavin Heseltine, the pair stopping in stage six. The luck would, though, be on the side of Andy Davison and Tom Murphy. They have a big moment in the second stage of the day, lucky to get away with this. They manage to get the car pointing back in the right direction again, counting their lucky starts and continuing to end the morning with sixth place, third in B11. For Barry Jordan and Paul Wakeley, it will be the lead in the H2 class. A good start to the rally for the pair, who were back out in the Avenger this weekend. Ewan Tyndall and Paul Hudson enjoyed a great debut last time out in the championship. And this weekend was going to plan as well, leading the N3 class at this stage from ninth overall. Right to eight, the 300. They're on 300. Stay middle of a bump at the end of fence on the right hand side. Tony Simpson and Ian Bevan end the morning inside the top 10, ninth place overall for the pair, and taking third in the R2 Cup at this stage as well. And rounding out the top 10 were Tim Phelps and Elwin Manuel, leading the way in the B12 class with those times. Let's move on to some of the classes outside the top 10 then, and it would be second in N3 for Matthew and Tim Tordoff, lying in 11th place overall. Just behind them in the class would be Martin Laverty and Phil Kenny. Third in N3 at this stage, just a few places back in 14th overall. And we'd have to go a little further back on the results to find second place in the B12 class. Damien Pratt's and Johnny Evans lying in that position in 29th overall. So we're three stages into the rally. We've got two more to complete here in Kielder. It's a different story to usual at the top of the Silver Star results. So let's see if those places remain the same on our leaderboard into the afternoon. Onto the afternoon stages then, and we would see some change. We lose Barry Jordan and Paul Wakeley for one from the results when they stop in stage eight. 
and it would also be the end of the rally for Steep Hopewell and Clive Jones. The pair, of course, dropping from that second place, rolling out of the rally. So on to those that finished then, and it would be 17th overall for Damien Pratt and Johnny Evans. The pair remaining second in the B12 class. It would be a good move up to third, meanwhile, in the N3 class for Zach Hughes and Tom Wood. 12th overall in that fiesta. For Matthew and Tim Tordoff, there would be no change. They remain second in the N3 class ahead of Hughes, ending the rally with 11th place overall. On to the top 10 then, and we would see change in that 10th place. Rob Bradley and Kevin Booth moving into the position, taking fourth in B11. For Ewan Tyndall and Paul Hudson, it would be another great rally, ending the day with the victory in the N3 class, as well as ninth place overall in Silver Star. For Jeff Phelps and Ian Beaumont, it would be third place in the B11 class, the escort pairing, taking eighth place on the leaderboard. And Rob Dennis and Andrew Boswell moved their way up the leaderboard a little, getting a little closer to where they would have expected to have been finishing as well, taking seventh place overall, second in the B11 class. And you just get the feeling there's more yet to come. For Tim Phelps and Elwin Manuel, it will be the B12 class win. A good end to the rally for the pair, their best result so far this season with sixth. No change in the R2 Cup. Tony Simpson and Ian Bevan continue to lie third in the class, moving up to take fifth place overall. Andy Davison and Tom Murphy make it through the rest of the rally without any issues, taking fourth place overall, and of course, taking the B11 class win in the Sunbeam. It would be a podium place for Ernie Graham and Robin Kellard, taking that final step on our Silver Star podium, as well as that H3 class win. Meanwhile, there'd be a move up the overall results in the final stages of the day for Bob Vardy and Keaton Williams, getting them second in Silver Star, but that second place in the R2 Cup still wouldn't change. Winner of that, and indeed winner of the Silver Star overall this weekend, would be George Lepley and Tom Woodburn. Their lead from this morning not threatened seemingly at all, taking victory by almost two minutes at the end of an exciting rally. So confirmation then of the results in the Silver Star category at the end of the event, complete with some new names fighting at the top of those results. Next up, the crews head to Wales for the Nicky Gris stages. We'll of course be there to bring you all of the action. In the meantime, you can check out our Facebook page for more of the action from the Carlisle Stages Rally. The Carlisle Stages would mark the latest instalment of the MRF Fiesta ST Trophy here in the BTRDA Rally Championship. As always on the Carlisle Stages, we mix things up a little, letting the co-drivers take centre stage in the interviews and giving the drivers a break from the cameras. On to the morning stages then, and it would be the lead for Ewan Tyndall and Paul Hudson. They'd become one of the many who'd get a puncture, but thankfully they managed to maintain that lead. Uh, it's all going pretty good, we're trying really hard, but the condition of the stages is not good, so we just happen to adapt to the conditions as and when we get there, basically, but uh, we've had a puncture, which didn't help, but uh, we're driving really well, Ewan's driving well, neat, tidy, you know, we've had a couple of little moments as you do, but uh, it's all part parcel of rallying, so, yep. For Matthew and Tim Tordoff, things were going to plan, second place at this stage for the pair, and without issue, other than it being a bit warm out there in the car. Bit warm out there, Tim, and yeah, it was really good. Saw a lot of people off, big jumps, pretty fast. Yeah, really good, really good stages, I thought. And Matt enjoying himself? Yeah, I mean, first stage, because we, we couldn't do the shakedown yesterday, you know, usual back into it, but the tyres are a lot better. Uh, you know, last time they went off a bit, these are great. Um, so yeah, good fun this afternoon, hopefully. No problems either for Martin Laverty and Phil Kenny. They were finding some parts of the stage to be rough, but it would be the same for everyone, of course. They lie in third place for now. It is a little bit rough in places in there, but it's just kind of same for everybody, so deal with it and keep on going. It must be rough if a local person saying it's rough. Yeah, they're, they're my favourite stages in there, and you, you can't deny there's some big stones kicking around. Um, you're driving around stones on the corners rather than around the corner. Um, 
just trying to look after the car. Zach Hughes and Tom Wood would be another pair to get a puncture in the morning stages. Punctures really would look like being a decider this weekend. Fourth place for the pair after the morning loop. Neil Fulis and Stephen Vary were gradually improving on their pace as the season went on. They lie in fifth place at this stage, a minute back from Hughes. James Giddings and Sean Cunniff, meanwhile, add themselves to the list of puncture sufferers. They'd be forced to pull over and change theirs, losing them time, of course, and meaning that they end the morning with sixth place. A similar story, too, with frustration for Calvin Green and Reese Stoneman. A puncture for them in stage two as well, and they'd also need to pull over and change the wheel in order to continue. Stage two looking a little like the M1 on a Friday afternoon. And rounding out the results now were Wesley Guilford and Sam Coleman. They'd actually have to stop on the stage a number of times to let the dust settle so they could see where they were going. So the morning complete, the results looking to be dictated by punctures, not pace so far. The stages used again in the afternoon, would that problem return? On to the afternoon stages then, and we lose Wesley Guilford and Sam Coleman, the pair going off the road into a ditch on stage seven. Stage seven would also see us lose Calvin Green and Reese Stoneman from the results. They don't make it to the final stage of the day. So of the finishers, it would be sixth place to end the rally for James Giddings and Sean Cunniff. Another puncture in the final stage, but any chances of a good result, well out of reach. The pair do, though, still lead the championship standings after this round. For Neil Fulis and Stephen Vary, the steady approach worked. They reached the end of the rally with fifth place overall. And there's some change to that final place on the podium. Martin Laverty and Phil Kenny dropping down to take fourth at the end of the event. That also then means a move into the podium places for Zach Hughes and Tom Wood. Delighted to be taking that third place with just seven seconds of an advantage over Laverty after a difficult day in the forests. But the battle at the top would remain the same. Matthew and Tim Tordoff ending the rally with that second place. A great end to the rally for the pair. And all of that, of course, means it's victory for Ewan Tyndall and Paul Hudson, a popular one as well. They show some great pace and commitment in the stages to take the win by 25 seconds by the finishing Carlisle. So confirmation then of the results here on the Carlisle stages. Killer Kield is certainly living up to its name out there for the Fiesta drivers. Next up, the crews head to Wales for the Nicky Griss stages. And as you've probably come to expect by now, we will be there to bring you all of the action. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page for more BTRDA and rally action. Thank you for watching Special Stage. Here, 40 for Readable Press Titans.